For those of you considering replacing your iPhone in the near future, I'll demonstrate two ways in which you can back up and restore your WhatsApp messages, both of which make use of the iCloud. However, before we start, a quick disclaimer. The process I'm about to demonstrate assumes you're backing up and restoring your account using the same phone number. If you are attempting to restore your account to a different phone number, then there is a WhatsApp support article, which I'll link to in the description below. But for the rest of us, let's get started. The first and recommended method is to use WhatsApp's built-in backup and restore feature. Click on settings followed by chats and select chat backup. If backups are off, you'll see this message notifying you that you'll need to enable iCloud Drive and WhatsApp in your iPhone settings app. So we'll switch over to settings, click on our name and choose iCloud. Here, as prompted, we need to enable iCloud Drive and WhatsApp, which looks like it gets enabled automatically when iCloud Drive is turned on. Having done this, we can switch back to WhatsApp and in chat backups, you'll see I have the option to backup now. Enable this switch if you wish to include videos and kick off the process. Whilst it's doing its thing, now is probably a good time to mention end-to-end -end encryption. You'll note here that WhatsApp says it cannot protect your chat messages using encryption whilst they're stored in the cloud. However, this may no longer be true depending on where you live in the world. WhatsApp is in the process of rolling out encrypted backups. So whilst it's not yet available here in Australia, it might be available to my friends over there in the US. And according to this article in Mac Rumors, if you do have this feature, you'll have an additional option of enabling encryption and you'll be prompted to create a password, which you'll then need when restoring your chat messages. Okay, once your backup is complete, you'll see a few details about the backup here and you can schedule additional backups by clicking on this option and choosing the frequency. We're now ready to restore our WhatsApp messages to our new phone. The first time you open the app, on your new phone, you'll be prompted to agree to the terms and conditions, and you may see this message. Now I have to admit, I found this message slightly confusing, but essentially, here's how I think it works. If you are transferring your WhatsApp account to a new phone, then click OK. WhatsApp will register this new phone with your account and deregister your account on your old phone. If you are not transferring to a new phone and instead just reinstalling WhatsApp on the same phone, you can click verify and WhatsApp will verify your phone number and you'll be logged straight back into your account without the need to restore from backup. However, since in this demonstration we are transferring to a new phone, I'll click on OK and the next step is to enter my mobile phone number. Having entered the number, if you set a PIN on your account, you'll be prompted to enter it and then you'll be prompted to restore your chat messages. Note that this is the only time you get to do this. There isn't an option in WhatsApp settings to restore. So if you skip this step now, you'll need to delete and reinstall WhatsApp to receive the prompt again. Click on restore, wait for the process to complete and then provide your name. And there you have it. All your messages should be restored to your new phone. An alternative way to transfer your WhatsApp account is to back up your whole phone to iCloud. If you are planning on trading in or selling your old phone before buying a new one, you'll need to do this process anyway, so let's go through it. You can see on this phone I haven't enabled WhatsApp backups from within the app itself. Instead, I'll switch over to settings, click on my name, choose iCloud, and then scroll down and select iCloud backups. You'll notice the WhatsApp switch here, which I haven't enabled. I think you only need to enable this option if you intend to back up to iCloud Drive, as I demonstrated in the first part of this video. However, if you want to be extra sure, there's no harm in enabling it, but I'll leave it disabled for now. In iCloud Backups, click on Backup Now. After it's finished, you'll see a message telling you whether it was successful, and we can now switch over to our new phone to begin the restore process. Activate your new phone and run through the steps until you get to this screen. Here I'll choose to restore from backup and then I'm asked for my Apple credentials. Having entered my Apple ID, I'll choose the backup I wish to restore from. I'll go with the most recent, run through the final steps and allow the restore process to complete. The phone will restart and you should be able to log into your new phone and open WhatsApp. Here, the process is very similar as before. Agree to the terms and conditions, click OK to the message as I explained earlier, and enter your phone number. Enter the PIN if you enabled two-factor authentication on your account. 
enter your display name and there you have it. Your account should now be restored to your new phone. So that is how to back up and restore your WhatsApp messages on iPhone. If you missed my video demonstrating how WhatsApp accounts are hacked and how you can protect your account from being hacked, then you might be interested in watching this. In the process of researching my next video to provide tips on how to protect your WhatsApp account, I came across this Twitter thread from an English TV presenter called Jeremy Vine. Back in November last year, Jeremy's WhatsApp account was hacked, or the correct term might be hijacked, and he tweeted out the sequence of events leading up to it. So I thought it might be interesting to first demonstrate how it happened, and secondly, to show you what you can do to immediately safeguard yourself against the same thing happening to you. To clearly demonstrate the process, I'll recreate the events using my own phone and WhatsApp accounts. So if your WhatsApp account is ever targeted by a hacker, it's likely that they have your details because they've already hacked into the accounts of one of your contacts. In Jeremy's case, it was his neighbor. By gaining access to the neighbor's account, the hacker immediately had Jeremy's phone number. But the real clincher was that it allowed the hacker to impersonate the neighbor. So when Jeremy received a message from the neighbor, he believed it to be completely genuine. And this is how hackers work. Once they gain access to one account, they'll use the same technique to access as many accounts as possible before being found out. So the first step in hijacking Jeremy's account was for the hacker to log into WhatsApp using Jeremy's phone number. This led Jeremy to receive a genuine activation code sent by WhatsApp. The hacker then used the neighbor's WhatsApp account to send Jeremy a message explaining how the code was actually intended for him and would Jeremy mind forwarding it on. Since the message came from the neighbor, Jeremy assumed it to be legitimate and as requested, forwarded on the code. Now at this point, you might be thinking that you'd never be so gullible as to fall for such a trick and hopefully that is the case. But if we look at the actual message, you can see that the hacker uses an emoji and adds urgency in the message to play on Jeremy's natural instincts to help. What's more, as Jeremy points out, the message was sent at 9.40 in the morning when Jeremy was busy at work and his mind on other things. He sees the message and his first instinct is to help his neighbor, so he simply replies with the code. The hacker, of course, enters the code and it's all over in a matter of seconds. Jeremy receives an alert in WhatsApp notifying him that his account is now associated with a different phone. The hacker has control of his account and the process for the hacker begins again with people in Jeremy's contact list receiving SMS activation codes and requests from Jeremy's hacked account to reply with the code. It's a horrible and scary situation for those affected by it, but thankfully it can be prevented by simply enabling two-step verification on your WhatsApp account. In WhatsApp, click on Settings followed by Account and select Two-Step Verification. Once enabled, this PIN code will be required every time you activate your account on a new device. So even if you inadvertently send a hacker the activation code, they will still need this additional PIN code to gain access to your account, which of course they won't have. If you're worried you might forget the PIN code, you can include an email address that can be used to reset the PIN. Visit the website for lots more tips on WhatsApp and all your favorite apps. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.